Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you five alternatives to using the caps lock key. Now, a lot of things I'm going to show you will be useful even if you don't have the caps lock key disabled. You'll learn some things here about word processing, text styling, and also accessibility features. So here are some alternatives if you've disabled or reassigned the caps lock key on your Mac. The way you would do that is to go into system settings and then go down to keyboard, then go to keyboard shortcuts and look for modifier keys. Here's the caps lock key and you can turn it off by setting it to no action or assign it to one of the other modifier keys or even the escape key. Now I'm not saying you should do that, some people do it because they find they accidentally hit the caps lock key and then type a bunch of capital letters that they didn't want. Others find it more useful as another modifier key. But if you like the caps lock key, then by all means, keep using it as normal. However, if you've disabled it, here are some alternatives for emphasizing letters and words. First, the most obvious, simply use this shift key, which you can easily use to type one capital letter, but you can continue to hold down and type several. This works fine if you just have to emphasize, say, one word. This also works great when you need to type acronyms and initialisms, like this or this. It's just a few letters, and it's pretty easy to hold down the shift key with one finger while you type with the others. Now, another option is that you've got a function that will allow you to capitalize a selection. So you can select a word after typing it as lowercase, then go to edit, and then look for transformations, and then you'll find make uppercase. Simply use that menu item, and it will switch all the letters there to uppercase. If you use this a lot, you can go into system settings, and then to keyboard, and then back into keyboard shortcuts. And then you could go and create your own under app shortcuts. I'm going to add one here and set it for all applications, since the transformations menu is found in lots of different apps. And I'm going to type the exact name of the menu item and then I'm gonna assign a keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna use Control Option Command in U and done. And now you can check in apps under Edit Transformations and see the keyboard shortcut has been added. So now you just can select some letters and use the shortcut to quickly capitalize them. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com Patreon. Now, if you're working in a word processor, like Pages or Microsoft Word, there's an even better option for you. Say, for instance, I want to make the name of this town all caps. So what I can do here is instead of transforming it to uppercase, I can assign a style that includes uppercase. So in the format sidebar here, under style, I can go to this menu here, which has a little gear as an icon there, it's text options. And then I could set capitalization here to all caps. And you could see how that converts it to all caps. Now, it hasn't permanently converted it there, it's applied a style. So I can actually switch it back to none. And it remembers that the first letter there was capitalized and the rest lowercase. It actually keeps the case of each letter there, it's just applying a style to make the lowercase letters appear as uppercase. Now you can go even further with this. I can assign all caps here like that. And then under character styles here, I can go into that and add a new character style. So I'm going to add it here and I'm gonna call this uh, town name. And now I can apply this character style somewhere else. So I can go to the next time I've got the same text there and I get apply the character style town name. Now the great thing about this is I could update it throughout the document. So say I have a hundred of these throughout my document. I can select one like this and then go and change it. I can switch it back. Let's say I don't want it to be all caps anymore. I just want it to be regular. And in addition to that, I'm going to make it bold, italic, and maybe change the color. I think that's a better look than all caps. Notice how town name now has an asterisk next to it, meaning that I've altered it. I can click here and update town name. And look at what happens to the second instance of that that will update as well. If I had 100 of them, all 100 would update because they'd all be linked to the same character style and I could update it whenever I want. So it makes it a much better alternative than making it permanently uppercase. This way you could always go back and change the style. And caps lock key aside, this is a very useful technique to use in pages for a variety of different style applications. 
Many other apps have the same functionality, like for instance, Numbers and Keynote, even third-party apps, like here I am in Pixelmator Pro, and I've got text here. I can go to the text tools, and I see the same kind of button right here, and there's capitalization, and I could switch to all caps, and I could switch back to none. But many apps don't have that. For instance, there's no way to do that here in Notes. You can't change capitalization like that here. Now, of course, I should add that if your purpose is to simply emphasize a word or more, you can simply use something like bold, a quick command B will do that. And bold is a much better alternative than making something all caps. You can use bold, you can use colors, you can use italics, you can use underline, all sorts of different things, even a different font in word processors to do this. You could do the same thing in mail, for instance, here I can easily bold this word here or make it a different font or different size, all sorts of things. But of course, one problem with that is you can't always use styles. For instance, a lot of social media apps don't allow you to stylize your text. And uppercase is really one of the few ways you can emphasize a word. But do keep in mind that using uppercase for more than one or two words is considered shouting. You may see it as just easier text to read or maybe to get a point across. But if you were to capitalize, say, an entire post, usually the other person sees that as you shouting at them. If that's not your intention, then you may want to use uppercase sparingly in social media posts, emails, text messages, and so on. But what about a real alternative to caps lock? Actually being able to type letters and they appear as uppercase even if you don't have the caps lock key enabled. Well, there is one way to do this. If you go into system settings and then you go into accessibility, there is an accessibility function called sticky keys. You could find it under keyboard. You could see sticky keys right here and you could turn it on. Look at information here to see the options. So here I've got it set to display the indicator and at the top left. So what does this do? Well, with sticky keys on, to use the shift key or any modifier key like command, control, and option, you can press it once and it switches it on like you're still holding it down. And then you press it again to turn it off like you've released it. So for instance here, if I wanted to type in all caps, I could just press shift once and you could see that shift indicator appear at the top left. Now the next letter I type will be uppercase, but then that instantly turns off sticky keys. So what you want to do is you actually want to press shift twice. If you press it once, notice how the up arrow is kind of a gray there. A second time right away will make it white. Now it's locked down. So the shift key is on until you turn it off. So now I can type like that. And if I press shift again, it releases it. Just keep in mind, there's no way to just have the shift key do this. The command key, for instance, will do it like that. So the next thing that I would press, like A for command A is going to work with sticky keys. Of course, sticky keys can be a useful feature for lots of people if you find that you have difficulty holding down modifier keys while using keyboard shortcuts and other commands. I hope you found some of this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.